Welcome back Tightwads. It is a beautiful morning here in Georgia. Had a good rain last night. The grass is all greening up. The gardens are starting to grow. And we are going to smoke a Boston butt today. I did a previous video showing a low and slow Boston butt with a drip pan and indirect heat using the plate setter. But today we are going to do it with no plate setter and direct heat. I have added a kick ash basket to my collection. That's what this basket is right here. It holds all the charcoal. So after you finish a cook, all you have to do is pick it up and shake it. It shakes all the ash out and then you just rake the ash out from the bottom or suck it out with your shop vac, whichever method you prefer. So today we're going to get started. I'm going to add a little bit more fresh lump to this. I'm going to use some apple uh, lumps of apple wood and we will show you the process from start to finish. All right, we're going to do a very simple setup today. I added some more lump, not too much. We only have a four and a half pound butt, so it should only take four and a half hours to cook. And I have my apple chunks. This is kind of the bottom of the bag. I like to have bigger chunks than this, but these will work. I'm going to put them on right before I put my butt on. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up the lump and we will get started with the cook. To start our lump today, I'm going to be using the loof lighter. I just turn it on and hold it down into the coals. I'm actually going to light it here. I don't typically light it directly in the back of the egg because that's where you get your best airflow anyway, so that coal tends to start better than what's in the front. So we're going to do the, uh, kind of a triangle design here to get it going a little faster than usual. Once you start seeing your sparks, you can back it away and hold it in the same area for a little while to get it caught on really good. And I'm going to move to the front and do the same thing. Make sure your bottom grates are open, that the ash door is closed when you're doing this process so you get some airflow coming through. So light your last corner and then we'll let it get up to a temp of about 275 and we'll get our grate put back on, get our, we'll get our chunks put in, our grate put on and then we'll go ahead and put on the meat. I put my meat on fat cap down about 275 and then slowly back it back down to about 190 to 200. That's where we want to live for the entire cook here. All right, today we're gonna to do a more of a minimalist butt. I have some French's mustard and some Bad Byron's butt rub. Really good rub, um, not too expensive. Uh, it comes in a large container. That's uh, one of my favorites. The key to rubbing your butt, <laughs> insert joke here, is to have a clean hand, which I'm gonna use my left hand, even though I'm left-handed, because my wedding ring's on it. I don't like the stuff getting stuck up under it. I'm gonna use my, white, my right hand as my meat hand. So I will squirt some mustard on it. The mustard doesn't do anything with the flavor of the egg. It simply gives it something for the rub to stick to. So I'll rub it all over, all four sides. Nice good coat of mustard. And then I shake on my rub. Shake it with one hand, rub it in with the other. And get it nice and covered on all sides. You can hear the fire getting started in the background. Another thing to mention is I like to get my butt up to about room temperature before I put it on. So I set it out from the fridge on the counter about an hour ago. And it looks pretty good. Make sure we don't have any spots missing. Get it down in any cracks, crevices, and your butt cracks, if you will. And this is good to go. So once our, you can wrap it if you have a little while before your egg's gonna be ready. I'm just gonna leave mine out here. Um, I'll cover it up to keep bugs off of it, but I'll leave it here until time to put it on the egg. 
All right, so I left the egg open for about the first 10 or 15 minutes after I started it. And I just now closed it. It's showing just under 200, which is probably not an accurate reading yet. It'll go up pretty quickly, but I want to stop it at about 275. I don't want it any higher than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close down my grates a little bit. If you can see this one, uh, about an inch on both ends. I'll watch it at about 275. I will add my chunks to it and I'll put the butt on and I'll put in my thermal probe. You'll hear hundreds of different ways to smoke a butt. Today, like I said, we're doing kind of a minimalist way. Um, all we're going to do is we're doing what's called direct heat, so we're not using the plate setter, we're not using a drip pan, and the only thing we're doing is at about 170 degrees, which is what I have my internal uh, thermal probe set for. At 170 degrees, we're going to take it off and foil it, uh, which is what people typically call the stall. Somewhere in that 165 to 175 range, your meat will stop rising in temperature, and that's when we'll foil it. We'll double foil with heavy duty foil, uh, but right now we're waiting on the smoke to even out. It's a little bit uh, white right now, and uh, we're going to wait till it turns more of a clear blue, and that's how we know when the coals are ready. And then I'm going to drop on, like I said, drop on these apple chunks and put my meat on as soon as that stabilizes at more of a clear blue smoke. All right, you can now see our smoke is more of the clear blue. That's the smoke that you want. We're around a little over 275, so we'll um, just go ahead and bump it down as soon as we put the butt on. I'm going to go ahead and add our chunks. I'm just going to sprinkle them on the top and put our meat on. Now with the meat on, I'm going to insert the thermal probe into the thickest part of the meat. I'm going opposite end of the bone so I don't have to contend with it. Alright, so I have the butt on. I have closed down my grates, or my vents, to where I think they need to be. Uh, maybe this one needs to be opened up just a little bit. And we will watch the temperature fall. We're hoping that it gets down to between 190 and 200 for the entire cook. Our internal temperature is currently 43 degrees. I have my target temperature set at 170 for now. That's not the target temperature for the cook, but that's about when I will put the foil on it. So I can pull this off. I really like this uh, digital thermometer. It's wireless. It's a range master. I have another video showing exactly how to use it and where I bought it that I will tag uh, for you right here. And I can take this inside and sit in the house and wait until my meat is ready. All right, this butt stalled a little earlier than most at 158. Uh, the temperature gauge could be a little bit off. So we're going to go ahead and foil the butt. Uh, here's our progress so far. Got good looking bark on the bottom and sides. Uh, so I'm going to pull it off and double wrap it in heavy duty aluminum foil. So I'm going to pull out the probe. And I've got these meat, big green egg meat claws. And I'm going to pick it up and put it on the foil. Wrap it up. And I'm going to wrap it up again. I'm going to put a little hole in it to get my thermometer, my probe back inside. And set it back on, shut it down, 
and we will now wait until it gets to right about 195 and or 200 and we'll pull it off all right so our internal temperature now says it's 198 so we're right where we want to be gonna open this up and I always like to get a second reading so I have another digital thermal pin that I will stick into the meat and we'll see what it reads And it reads 202, it's probably not dead in the center. So that just lets me know that we are close on our, on our readings. So we will remove the meat, uh, remove the probe, leave it in the foil, wrap it in a towel, because we're eating in about 30 to 45 minutes. I'm not gonna put it in a cooler because the towel will uh, help retain enough of the temperature for us. All right, so I wrapped the butt inside a towel and went ahead and set it in the dish that we're going to serve it in, just a pla or a glass Pyrex dish. And it'll sit here until time to eat, and then we'll shred it using the bear claws. Uh -oh. Alright, here's the finished product. It's been sitting for 45 minutes, and I'm going to remove it from the foil, put it in the pan. Uh, we're going to pull the bone out of it. It should wiggle right out, and then we will shred it using the meat claws. Here's the finished product. And a little smoke ring around the edge. And it tastes delicious. Although the bark didn't turn out great, the flavor of this Boston butt was, was phenomenal. Got great reviews from all the people that came over to eat. I think if I would have left it uncovered, unfoiled, for about 30 minutes or 45 minutes longer, I could have established a really good bark on it. But I knew I was in a time crunch for getting it ready in time for supper. All in all, this was a very successful cook and I like the minimalist version of cooking without the plate setter. If you want to see a video showing how I smoke my ribs on the big green egg, click the video in the top left. If you want to see a demonstration of how the loof lighter works, click the video in the top right. Hope you guys have a great day.